All right, we begin now by breathing deeply. And as we breathe, we allow ourselves, if we will, to tune in to the idea of the sun, because this is what the name of is, let the sun in. And we all know how good it feels to feel the sun today, after no sun for many, many days. And we all know the sun was still there. It was still there. It was still shining. But what stopped it from coming here, what blocked it, was the obscurations of clouds. And we all know clouds are a manifestation of water. Of water. Condensed water. Condensed feeling. Condensed energy. And when it's that way, the clouds can stop the sun from reaching here. Now this is a good analogy to understand that your soul is the sun. The clouds are the relationship of mental thought forms and of emotional energy. Now, emotional energy is not necessarily just feelings. Emotional energy can simply be waves of condensed energy. Waves of condensed energy. So today's meditation is called Let the Sun In, and we are doing it here in the Southern Hemisphere. So tomorrow is the shortest day of the year. And then we will move back into the sun cycle. And in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the longest day of the year. And then they will move back into the diminishing now, the truth is the sun is never diminished, is it? The truth is what is happening is the earth is at the farthest most point of its orbit in relationship to the solar body. So as we begin our meditation and as we breathe deeply, we understand the physical body is our earth body. And the solar body is a representation of the sun. And so in some ways for a moment as we breathe deeply, we just go with the rhythm that we have been very, very far apart from our souls. And indeed, we are at that point on the planet in which the idea of separation from the whole, separation from Godhead, separation from universal consciousness, the illusion that we are not connected to all that is. Many, many teachings say the planet, the human beings are at the furthest point from their solar activation now. This is why we call it a dark time. Although there have been many dark times on the planet. But today we breathe in, understanding within the physical body, as you breathe into the physical body, where there might be something in the physicality of the body that's very, very far away from your own soul. Now, of course, the soul has come and assigned you the code that you have come into as you're learning. But in the density of the form, the density of the physicality of the body, it is very easy not to remember that higher circulation of solar light into earthly planes. So as we breathe, we want to see that that's happening on the earth. The earth is in its furthest point from the sun in its orbit. And we also want to see that for humanity in some ways. We are experiencing a time when we have gone so far into separation at an egoic earth level that many people have forgotten their own solar cycle, the solar energy, the soul. So you just breathe into that juxtaposition within yourselves of where am I really separate from my soul? Where in my daily life, in my earthly life, walking in my earth form, am I not in relationship to the solar energy? And as you do this, you allow yourself with this affirmation to affirm indeed that you are not only close to the soul, 
but the soul is always with you. As you say to yourself, I open my physical body. I remember. I remember. I remember. Become a member again of my solar consciousness. And the physical body is able to be at peace and to relax and be nourished by this relationship. Each person who hears this has many parts to themselves inside this form. Not only the form that you dress and the scent and the color you wear, but you have all your organs and your glands. You have all your memories. You have all your genetics. Many of these patterns that your body carries are like the obscurations of the clouds. They're patterns of energy that have condensed so that it doesn't feel you can get the solar light through them. And quite often, you may spend many lives before you awaken to the reality that your consciousness is always in tandem with the soul. And all you have to do is expand your consciousness to remember, to remember, to remember. And as you do this, you allow yourself to say, I open my mental body. I rise above the mundane earthly plane of shenanigans, stories, fears, media, relationships, dynamics that are playing out to keep my consciousness at a lower level. And I open my mental body so that I may receive the emanations of solar consciousness that my own soul desires for me to be. Now you hear what we say, not just to see, not just to hear, but to be. And this is why we give you the meditation about the sun and the clouds. To be, you have to get the soul's consciousness through. And then the soul's consciousness is a frequency of electromagnetic energy that then, rather than butt up against the condensed energy pattern, whether it be a mental, emotional, karmic, genetic, or etheric, the friction between the soul and that, you will start developing and breathing and knowing the power of solar energy. And again, this representation of the clouds and the sun and the earth and the moisture. The moisture represents the emotional body. The moisture in the earth, so many days of rain, wet, wet, wet. Because of that, no way to have it circulate upward, no way for it to circulate upward. So then clouds condense and block the light. And then as you see in this world, particularly here in New Zealand, people get sad. Seasonal affective disorder because your organism needs a spectrum of light to operate in high functioning energy. Now this is like using lower octane petrol in your vehicle. You can still drive it, but it sputters a bit. It jerks a bit. It doesn't quite run clean. And so this over-identification with emotionality creates large blockages. Sometimes from the soul's light. And yet what happens is people do not have the courage to experience the emotional density that is coming up for them. It's like if you look at all the rain that has occurred 
At first you go, I can wear a raincoat. I can wear an umbrella. I can protect myself from the onslaught of liquid. And then you can't because the earth herself is dissolving. All the sediment, all the hardness is starting to soften, soften, soften. Because this is what the emotions do. They allow you a transmutative tool. But it takes courage to allow yourself to experience your emotions. Waveforms of energy. You allow yourself now to say to yourself, I open my emotional body. I let go the blockages that my mind, my ego, my fears have about being open emotionally. I let the emotional nature flow with the higher recognition of the emotional body being a tool for the soul. I welcome the flow to move and release all stagnant energies that I have been holding within my emotional body. So now you breathe into the physical form, the earth. You breathe into the mental body, the space. You breathe into the emotional body, the water. And as you start recognizing this body, these feelings, these thoughts, all have a lower manifestation, and yet all also have come from a higher manifestation. And as you do that, you begin to understand that how can I walk between the lower manifestation and the higher manifestation? And you don't really have to walk between them, but you need an integrative tool. And that integrative tool is your etheric body. It is a ball of energy that is not physicalized. It is a higher vibrational energy, what we would say corpuscle. And that etheric body holds the keys, the blueprints, often holds the patterns, often holds the equations for you that you are going to work out. It's like your personal library. So we want you each to begin to feel that this body, these feelings, this lower thought is all within this kind of womb of creative energy. And it doesn't matter if it's got karmic seeds in it. It doesn't matter if it's got patterns of stagnation. It is still like a library. You can check the book out. You can use it. You can put it back in. But what is within that etheric body is what the soul is giving you as the conductive field that allows you integration between the physicality, the lower emotional nature, the lower mental aspect, and your higher solar consciousness. So really breathe in now to this womb of creative power that is actually like an amniotic sac for your body. And just like before your body was born, there was simply the womb. And then there was one tiny little corpuscle and another. And then the growth happened. But you needed that space to grow the form. The form came from the formless. And this is the bridge of light that you are. Form that has come from formless. Now, if you stay in the lower mind, you will easily feel that's dualistic. But from the higher perspective, there is no duality at all. It is like the Fibonacci, the Mandelbrot. Form comes from formlessness. And you will return to formlessness as you evolve, which can be very, very scary to an egoic being. But as you breathe into this womb of creation, which is your etheric body, we want you to see it as your library. It holds the keys to your Akashic records, the memories of many other lives, that have gifts for you to use, memories of other lives that you are here trying to perfect patterns of energy developed in the mental body or the karmic body. 
It has with you spiritual nourishment. So as you breathe now, we want you to breathe beautiful gold and silver light. One gold, one silver up into the nose, into the body, up over the head, down the spine, all the way down your spine, meeting at the root chakra. And then see those energies come up until you see this beautiful circulation of your own masculine and feminine energies through your etheric body, through your antakarana, through your central channel. And you let these two energies pulsate and vibrate, work in tandem rather than work against each other. As you say to yourself, I open my etheric body. I open the higher channels of light and prana that are available to me to help me raise the frequency of this form that I am in, <clears throat> of this emotional body that I am in, of this mental body that I am in. And I recognize the I that is me is the higher energy body, is the higher template. And indeed, the emotional body, the mental body, the physical body, and even the etheric body are within this higher solar consciousness. And if you will allow yourself to say, I receive the alignment to my solar fire. I ask for it to burn through the obscurations, the obscurations which have been holding my soul's light from my earthly life. I ask for solar alignment. And this is letting the sun in. As you do this now, as you sit here now, as you sit wherever you are, as you listen to this, you realize the world itself is in relationship to the solar logos, to the monadic life of higher principles of thought that are not limited to a terrestrial life, but that are seeing the perspective of the relationship of terrestrial to solar, seeing the perspective of earthly to planetary, seeing the perspective of solar to galactic. And yes, indeed, these lower minds, these lower feelings, even the lower body sometimes feels it cannot cope with the opening of awareness that is the truth of the universe. But we say you are living in a portal of change that allows very benevolent transmission of higher conscious bodies of light to assist you as a species and you as people to very quickly burn through your obscurations. What obscures you from being love. What obscures you from being conscious? We're going to do a harmonic now. Nyo 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 
Breathing in the vibration of love. Breathing in the vibration of light. Breathing in the vibration of Christ. Breathing in the vibration of love. Breathing in the vibration of love. Breathing in the vibration of love. Love is a substance that feeds your mind. Love is a substance that feeds your body. Love is a substance that feeds your emotions. Love is a substance that feeds your energy. Love is a substance that feeds your soul. Your soul is the transformer from universal love into an individuated form so that you are held in a substation of universal love known as the soul which is eternal which will of course transmute itself eventually but it allows you a substation of love so that you can come in and experience this earthly walk now we understand many people are victimized by this early earthly walk it seems very much a time where everybody feels victimized by it. But you're not. You are embraced by the most benevolent love with great cheering squads waiting for you to step up. And at first, when you are asked to step up, and all of you are, or you would not be sitting in this circle, it's like walking on stilts. You, you think, oh, I can, I can do it, but I need support to walk up. But the support isn't solid. The support is energetic. It's subtle. It's not of the earth. It's of higher substance. Therefore, this is why you are giving a meditation where you open to the higher substance of your own being. That is the first doorway. Open to the higher substance of your own soul. And then it is like that opens. And then you remember you've lived time and time again. And then you understand your patterns. And then you get a taste of the higher love that forgives. Your soul does not hate you. You are not hated. You are not failed. You are learning how to walk on stilts. And it takes practice sometimes. And at this time now on the earth, when you are living through such density, simultaneously such awakening, but such vaporous energy coming up from the dregs of emotionality, such as war. War seems like it is a decision we must have war to maintain something. And it is calculated. It's a calculated decision. With no owning of the emotionality and the density of emotions that will be created by that arrangement. 
And that density of emotion doesn't disappear, as you recently probably saw on Insect Day. The emotionality has not disappeared, even though that was a long, long time ago. It is still being carried in people and the earth. So you live in a time now where you're being asked to lift up your own feelings that are so dense, that are like molasses, that are thick and yucky, and you don't think you want to even look at them. You are being asked to have the courage to line up to the soul and say, give me the courage because I do not want to be trapped in the lower frequency. And once that door is open, you will have the guiding light. You will have the solar energy that will guide you. There are many beings in support of this process for your world, for humanity. Let the sun in. Long for it to come in. Desire it. Desire to be more than you know yourself to be. And then you will be more than that. And indeed, old patterns will leave. Old attachments may leave. Old relationships may leave. But you will be lifted up. All right. How are you?